what's good everyone it's been a hot minute i hope you guys have been well and keeping your money right my name is coach susan and i would like to welcome you to another episode of finance friday now on this channel we talk a lot about money and investing and we've been learning a couple of things that we can consider in terms of like investment options that we can make and today i thought it would be important to just quickly highlight some of the mistakes that i see people making when they are investing their money so that we can avoid them all right thanks for sticking around So the first investment mistake you want to avoid is actually investing in things you do not understand. I've met quite a number of people telling me how they got into specific investment options because a friend or a close family member referred them to that particular investment. I've always loved to tell people this. Recommendations are not bad. I've also gotten a lot of good investment recommendations from friends, family members, and colleagues. However, it is important that you take your time, conduct your due diligence, and actually understand this investment that you are investing in. And when you're trying to understand an investment, there are three ways, or rather three things that I love to ask myself. Number one, what is the underlying asset? Like if I put my money in this investment, ideally what asset is my money being invested in? So is it being invested, for instance, in the stock market? Is it real estate? Is it government securities? What exactly is the underlying asset? The second thing you want to, to ask yourself so that you can understand an investment is what exactly is the risk associated with that investment? We have low risk, we have medium risk, and we have high risk. So it is important that you understand the other thing you need to ask yourself is actually how can I best leverage on this investment? Because not every investment option in the market is for you at a given particular point in time. So those three questions will really help you to understand. I've always also loved to say that you should ideally be able to explain that investment to yourself or even to your grandma and they should ideally be able to understand. So understand, understand, understand really what you're investing in. All right. The second investment mistake you want to avoid is actually not matching your investment style or your investment choices with your goals. The best kind of investment strategy is to actually invest in alignment with your goals. All right. So the first step in to invest in isn't ideally choosing an investment or trying to find out exactly how much return am I going to get from this. The first step to invest in is asking myself, what exactly are my financial goals? What do I want to achieve? Is it having an emergency fund? Is it passive income? How often do I want this passive income? Is it annually? Is it semi-annually? Is it monthly? All right. What else do I want to achieve? Is it real estate investment or do I want rental income? First of all, defining what those goals are is critical in choosing the right investment options, because all I have to do once I've clarified my goals is to actually now match these goals and ask myself, OK, if I want to um, start building a money, uh, rather, sorry, uh, emergency fund what investment option works for this if i want rental income what kind of investments do i do i have to make if for instance i want passive income you know bonds and the stock market then come in um in into play in that sense all right so you have to match your goals and your investment choices so if you're making an investment and you can't really you can't quite tell which of my financial goals are actually served by this investment option you probably don't need that investment and that has really helped me in my journey when I started investing and especially because most times you don't have as much money to invest in so many things. So it's very important that you clarify exactly what you want so that you can be able to start step by step building your investment portfolio and not just because other people are investing in those things. No but because you've very clearly defined your goals and so you're able to attach different investment options. All right. The third mistake is actually forgetting to invest in your own financial education. I've said this probably a hundred times on this channel, and I don't mind repeating it because we still have a long way to go with regard to financial literacy. Okay. 
an investment in education will actually pay you the best return. Before you invest in the stock market, please go to a class and learn exactly what the stock market is, how it works, and how to invest in it. All right. Before you get into real estate, go to someone or go to a class and learn the pros and cons, how the market is. Before you get into bills and bonds, understand exactly how bills and bonds work. All right. What you need to know if you want to get into investing in bills and bonds. You know why? Because you see, the moment you get educated, nobody can actually take away that knowledge that you've already acquired and even after that it's very hard for someone to scam you or to sell you something that is not making sense because you already have prior information how that particular investment should work so i've always loved to tell people i mean I'm, I'm yet to meet a person who can actually scam or con me because I'm very aware. Like if it is the stock market, I know what I should pay for and what I shouldn't. If it's bills and bonds, like I have information about how this investment works and how it doesn't work. All right. So it's very important for you to educate yourself, not just on how investment work, investments work, but also how you can build um, an investment portfolio that actually works for you. All right. The other mistake that I see people making is actually not diversifying their portfolio, all right? So you find that there are people who have just very low-risk, conservative um, investments, and then you have other people who are on the other extreme who take very high risks, okay? Now, these two people here both have um, a challenge, all right? Because if you're just taking low-risk investments, like your money is just in money market funds and circles and your bank, I, I keep reminding people that you cannot... Uh, money market fund your way to financial freedom you have to take some risk because of course we are also taking into consideration the factor of risk versus return all right the higher the risk the higher the return as well all right so there's a problem in just kind of like concentrating all your money in low risk investments because all you'll ever get is also low return all right and then there's this other bunch who just put their money in volatile high risk investments now if you've been there you know um when you make money you make some really good money but also when you lose money you lose serious money right so you want to diversify your portfolio and you want to have like a, a well like you have to have a you want to have a good mix of um low risk investments and high risk investments to kind of like get a balanced portfolio obviously pay attention to your risk appetite but don't just put all your all your money in low risk investments and neither is it safe to put a very huge uh, portion of your money on high risk volatile investments you want to have some of your money in low risk in investments just so that you have a cushion around you uh and then of course you want to put a bit of your portfolio in some medium risk medium to high risk investments just to ensure we are maximizing on our returns all right the sixth mistake i see people making is failing to really understand your risk appetite now risk appetite isn't what am i feeling inside it, it's not about feelings okay i love to talk about risk appetite in this sense like what exactly am i Am I willing and able to lose and it will not cause a catastrophic um, effect in my finances? All right. Let me give you a good example. If I earn maybe 50,000 and I have expenses, maybe I have a child in school, I have a family to, to take care of. I cannot take all my 50,000 and put them in a Forex um, trade. Uh, you know, and I've seen people doing this, literally taking school fees money. And money that is meant for many other things and putting it in high risk volatile and guaranteed investments because there's always this um tendency of people to really kind of like hype each other up and tell themselves oh you know i put this x amount of money and i got times two or times three and so we take some unreasonable levels of risk all right so what exactly is my risk appetite my risk appetite is if i'm putting money in a high risk and volatile investment it's 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 it has got to be money that i'm willing to lose that sounds very off but that's ideally what we are saying all right by the time i'm putting money in forex i'm putting money in crypto for instance or 
you know in a very high risk and volatile um investment it it really has it really has to be money that i'm already willing to lose not that i'm investing with the intent of losing the money but even if i lost the money there shouldn't be catastrophic um effect in my family life my my fi financial wellness i shouldn't strip out slip out in the streets or even you know my child shouldn't not be able to go to school because i lost this money which is why organizing your portfolio as we've just talked about in a balanced portfolio is it's it, i mean in a balanced way is a very important thing all right so i've had some professionals raise issues like you shouldn't have like more than five percent or ten percent of your portfolio in something like crypto or even forex all right so you want to actually pay attention to how much of my money is in low risk investments how much of my money is in medium risk investments and how much of my money is in high risk and volatile investments you don't want that to be a lot of money that if you lost then you would get into trouble so you want to understand your risk profile in terms of how much money am i willing and am i able to put in this high risky or rather um, a risky and volatile investment and still be able to kind of like you know relax even when there are fluctuations in the market all right the seventh mistake is this thing i see about people timing the market especially if you are an investor in the stock market now i love to tell people time and time again that timing the market and speculation especially if you are not a trained investment analyst that is not an investment strategy guys every good and informed um every good investment must be data driven and it has to be informed all right so and this is one of the reasons i feel like um i know the kenyan stock market is in doing very well and it's not just the kenyan stock market but globally the stock market has not been doing well all right but that aside i've also found that a lot of especially because i coach and interact with kenyans a lot i find that a lot of us approach stock market investing in that way like we are timing the market so you are buying the kcb share because you've had that um you know the price is going to go up so you want to come in when the prices are low wait for when the price goes up and then you know you get your profit well that may be a good thing there's a very fine line between timing the market and actually gambling most of us are pretty much playing spot pesa with our money claiming that we are investing in the stock market anyone who has invested in the stock market and has successfully benefited from it probably did it for the long term because for stock market prices to go up it reflects the growth of a company or the growth of an economy and those things don't happen overnight all right so timing the market and speculating is not an investment strategy so what is data you need to learn as much as possible about the company about the industry it is in about the future earnings or projected future earnings and just about the financial health of that company at that particular time that's data now that will help you to have an informed investment decision as opposed to kind of like wait and see all right so stop timing the market if you're not a trained investment analyst like you don't know how to conduct um uh, fundamental analysis you don't know how to conduct technical analysis like this isn't something you've been trained to do please stop gambling and actually come back this way um the boring kind of investments where we um use data to inform our decision so a good investment must be data driven so in other words you need to justify with data why you are actually getting into that investment all right the eighth mistake is making investment decisions emotionally i've said this here before separate your heart from your hustle that's all i'm going to say stop making emotional financial decisions and most times it's panic all right like right now there's a lot happening in the markets like my money market fund interest rate is down when i look at my investment portfolio in my uh, diane blair account the stock market investments most of them guys are actually at a negative chest pains <laughs> it's it's really i mean it's scary all right maybe you've invested in like a bond fund or an equity fund and i mean these numbers are just not impressive the worst thing you can do right now is to actually panic with drew that is an emotional decision 
if you made informed decisions when you are getting into these investments you're going to actually realize that because i know what's happening i know we are probably going into a recession the stock market is crashing globally the interest rates are coming low you just relax just chill which is why the what we talked about on diversifying is very important because some of my money that's been affected by low interest rates and um crashing stock market prices is not money i need right now it's not money i need for you know moving around and just getting by no that's money that was stacked up for that purpose long-term investing so even as we are experiencing these short-term fluctuations i'm actually not panicking because i know that if i can be able to weather the short-term fluctuations and then we start kind of like the economy starts recovering then my investments with recover will also recover in the same way all right so you don't want to make emotional investment decisions don't just i mean understand why interest rates are going down first understands why the dividends are coming down understand why the prices are coming down like first of all before you just pull out that investment even at a loss just understand why it's happening because sometimes all you need to do is wait it out okay and it works out so just don't make emotional investment decisions also don't make investment decisions on the go i see a lot of people just being approached by salespeople. you're literally in town on the road and someone brings you a document sells you a product and you actually fill in the form and sign the document yo <laughs> don't do that all right take the time Take your time, go uh, with that document home, read and understand the terms and conditions, ask questions, never ever sign an investment contract um, on the same day that you got it, unless you're fully aware of what this investment is, all right? So don't make these decisions hastily and also be very aware, be aware of pushy salespeople. So all that is just to say, don't make these decisions emotionally, whether that's panic or excitement, you want to be level-headed when you're making money decisions all right awesome the ninth mistake is actually failing to consider the tax implications of investments and i've seen this happening a lot because i hear people saying company xyz is stealing from me or the return was not what i expected guys as long as you're earning money if you're earning an income like a salary you will be deducted payee right so if you're earning investment income you have to be taxed. So there is actually withholding tax on bills and bonds. There's withholding tax on your money market funds. There's tax you have to pay on your dividend income. At least some things like pension funds have some tax exemptions up to set limits. So you need to understand even before you get into an investment. So that, that actually helps you to calculate your real return. All right. So please ensure that you understand exactly what your tax implications are for particular investments, how to declare and file for them. Some are deducted at source. For instance, um, before your money market fund return is sent to you, they've already withheld the tax, the 15% tax, same to bills and bonds. But for something like dividends, you'll receive your dividends. But when you're reporting your income for that year, you have to report the dividends that you received. All right. So you just have to understand exactly what the tax implications are so that you don't walk around saying people are stealing, um, you know, or even have KRA looking for you because you didn't actually declare the um, returns from your investment. So the same way you have to declare your income in terms of business income, salaried income. You also have to find a way to declare your um, investment income as well. All right. Finally, and this is a huge one. Don't make this mistake, not investing regularly and actually not having these investments in your budget. Listen, guys, investing is not an event. It is an actual lifestyle. And when you make it a lifestyle, when you make it part of your budget, when you, I mean, the same way I have to pay for rent every month, I have to pay into my emergency fund. I have to pay into my retirement fund. I have to, you know, send some money into my brokerage account. That way you stop having the mentality that I need to wait for lump sum 
money i mean give me a yes in the comment section if you've ever been in a place where you still you didn't invest and you didn't start investing because for some reason you were waiting for lump sum money you're like i need a hundred thousand or five hundred thousand or one million to start investing Instead of doing that, you can decide to have your 10,000 or 5,000 being directed towards your investments on a much more regular basis, like on a monthly basis. That way, you're able to practice paying yourself first. All right. So paying into your investment and savings account before you even pay into other things. All right. That way, investing becomes a lifestyle the pressure and the stress reduces significantly when you just turn investing into a random bill just like the many other bills that you pay that way you invest more regularly you are more consistent and it is very easy for you to build a very good portfolio over time with as little pressure as possible all right now I have a very exciting class coming up on the 27th of May. It's called Invest for Your Best Life Masterclass. All right. In this masterclass, I'm going to be teaching you guys in a very simple, you guys, I know I'm not all about jargon. I just get into it. All right. I'm going to teach you guys in a very simple way. How exactly do I build an investment portfolio that works for me? I'm going to be sharing examples with you guys. I'm going to be showing you exactly what a, a typical investment portfolio should look like. A very simple, basic one that you can also keep building on. This investment masterclass is going to be on Friday, the 27th of May at 7 p.m. If you haven't already registered for this class, you don't want to miss out on it. It's going to be a group masterclass and I'm going to be bringing all the juice, all right? Right? So I'm going to link the registration link down below in the description box. So register for it. The registration deadline is actually on the 26th of May. All right. So if you've ever wanted to sit into one of my master classes, this is the one you don't want to miss. All right. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope it was helpful. Remember to share, to like, and to comment down below. Um, and yo, remember to also subscribe so that you can be notified when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Finance Friday.